Something deeply concerning is unfolding in the technology sector right now. If you've been tracking market movements lately, you've witnessed astronomical sums flooding into artificial intelligence. It's exhilarating. Investors who backed companies like NVIDIA, now valued at nearly $5 trillion, have watched their portfolios soar. But what if the reality is that we're witnessing the inflation of a colossal AI bubble? and China is positioning itself to burst it wide open, fundamentally disrupting the entire industry? This story first broke last month through a Bloomberg investigation titled Why Circular AI Deals Among OpenAI, NVIDIA, AMD Are Raising Eyebrows. The findings reveal something unsettling about how the American economy currently operates. The financial merry-go-round. Tech behemoths aren't genuinely generating new value anymore. They're essentially circulating capital among themselves. OpenAI channels billions to Oracle. Oracle purchases NVIDIA hardware. NVIDIA reinvests those funds back into AI startups. It's a closed-loop financial carousel, and everyone involved is pretending it represents authentic economic growth. On balance sheets, this makes the U.S. economy appear robust. The Dow Jones has surged nearly 14% this year. President Trump has naturally claimed credit, declaring that America has entered its golden age. But here's a headline that should trigger alarm bells everywhere. NVIDIA's total valuation now exceeds 16% of America's entire GDP. The U.S. economy has become dangerously overleveraged, and Wall Street is essentially gambling blindfolded. The overwhelming majority of these astronomical valuations stems from expectations that AI will deliver miraculous technological breakthroughs. Don't misunderstand me. Artificial intelligence is extraordinary technology that has already woven itself into our everyday existence. I'll demonstrate how momentarily. But there's a critical problem lurking beneath the surface. American AI corporations lack a transparent roadmap to generating the revenue necessary to justify these stratospheric valuations. Meanwhile, halfway across the globe, China is pursuing an entirely different AI strategy, one that could ultimately serve as the catalyst that deflates America's AI bubble. China's journey to reach this position actually began seven decades ago when Mao Zedong articulated a quote so prescient he essentially predicted exactly what's transpiring today. On October 29, 1955, Chairman Mao declared, Our goal is to catch up with the United States and moreover to surpass the United States. Exactly how many decades it will take depends on everyone's efforts. At least 50 years, perhaps 75 years. 75 years would be 15 five-year plans. Only on the day we catch up with and surpass the United States will we be able to breathe a sigh of relief. Enormous credit to geopolitical analyst Arnaud Bertrand for surfacing this quote, because it's absolutely essential to comprehending what's unfolding between these two superpowers. China has now entered its 15th five-year plan, precisely what Mao envisioned, and China is now surpassing the United States. These five-year strategic plans represent the most fundamental difference between these two nations. In the United States, administrations rotate every four years. And, well, meaningful progress frequently stalls an endless bureaucratic gridlock. In China, a long-term centralized system means once a national objective is established, it gets executed, and it gets executed rapidly. During China's most recent five-year plan, the government committed to becoming the global leader in renewable energy. Examine what materialized. China now dominates battery technology, electric vehicle production, and controls the complete supply chain for solar panel manufacturing. China's government has now designated the AI industry as the priority for the next five years, launching the AI Plus Action Plan, which will integrate artificial intelligence throughout the entire Chinese economy. But here's the crucial distinction. China's AI strategy is specifically productivity-focused, prioritizing artificial intelligence for actual real-world solutions that can enhance people's lives immediately. China is deploying AI to power sectors like robotics, healthcare, and smart city infrastructure. 
In the United States, much of the AI boom centers around companies like OpenAI, which construct large language models primarily used for chatbots and content generation. In a remarkable interview with the Financial Times, NVIDIA's CEO Jensen Huang made a stunning proclamation to the world China, not the United States, will ultimately win the artificial intelligence race. He specifically identified two primary reasons for this conclusion. I'm going to examine both in detail throughout this analysis, while also illuminating why the United States faces far greater risks than merely losing a technology competition to China. Now we arrive at the core argument from Jensen Huang regarding why he believes China will ultimately prevail in the AI race. These reasons are substantial. Remember how I mentioned China's previous five-year plan focused entirely on dominating renewable energy? It succeeded. China now generates more electricity than any other nation on Earth, and it's still expanding aggressively. While America's power grid has barely grown over two decades, this single graph alone might explain why China will win the AI race. That's precisely what NVIDIA's CEO Jensen Huang highlighted in his interview. AI advancement depends fundamentally on power availability. China grasps this reality and is providing its technology companies with a massive competitive advantage through affordable government-subsidized energy. The second reason Jensen Huang believes China will win the AI race? Regulation, or more accurately, the absence of excessive regulation. In the United States, individual states want to craft their own AI legislation, which means we could soon face 50 different regulatory frameworks strangling innovation before it can even begin. Huang warned that this kind of political fragmentation is already decelerating progress across the West, where governments appear more preoccupied with fear and skepticism than with opportunity. The irony of free markets, huh? China, conversely, has adopted the completely opposite approach. Its national strategy is clear, centralized, and execution-driven. The AI Plus Action Plan gives companies authorization to build rapidly, integrating AI across every economic sector with minimal bureaucratic obstacles. For most Western observers, this might be challenging to comprehend because China is frequently portrayed as a rigid single-party state with strict controls. But when it comes to AI development, it's actually China demonstrating what a genuine free market for innovation looks like. If the United States wants to compete with China long term, it'll need to absorb this lesson. Think bigger, act faster, and adopt a more open mindset toward innovation. The AI race won't be won by whoever develops the technology first. It'll be won by whoever implements it fastest. And presently, that's China. But as I indicated at the beginning, the dangers of America's AI strategy run far deeper than simply losing a technology race to China. The U.S. speculation-driven approach to AI could literally trigger an economic collapse. Without emphasis on practical, real-world applications, AI technology in the United States has essentially become one massive gamble that's single-handedly propping up the entire American economy. Last month, a Harvard economist issued a stark warning, without data center construction, GDP growth in the United States registered just 0.1% in the first half of 2025, nearly recession territory by itself. But the warning indicators don't stop there. Consider this revealing article. You have no idea how screwed OpenAI actually is. If you want evidence of giant red flags in the U.S. AI industry, this piece exposes the reality. The OpenAI financial crisis is honestly staggering. In the first half of 2025, OpenAI generated $4.3 billion in revenue but posted a net loss of $13.5 billion. That means OpenAI is losing approximately three times more money than it's earning and is projected to post a $27 billion net loss by year's end. Let me express that even more simply. For every dollar of revenue growth OpenAI achieves, it's costing them $7.77. As an active investor myself, these fundamentals are genuinely alarming. And I must be frank, 
I'm not particularly impressed with OpenAI CEO Sam Altman, who desperately needs a lesson in humility. Just examine this clip from an investing conference earlier this year, where an investor asks about competition. Where is it that a team from India, you know, three super smart engineers with not a hundred million, but let's say 10 million could actually build something truly substantial? Sam Altman's response. Look, the way this works is, we're going to tell you it's totally hopeless to compete with us on training foundation models. You shouldn't try. I think it is pretty hopeless. That clip emerged from a conference at the start of the year. Ironically, just two months later, China released DeepSeek AI, which accomplished exactly what that independent investor inquired about and what Sam Altman claimed could never be done. Outperform OpenAI while doing it with a fraction of the budget. But the story becomes even more absurd. Just last week, Sam Altman tweeted, we expect to end this year above 20 billion in annualized revenue run rate and are looking at commitments of about 1.4 trillion over the next eight years. Let's be realistic. There is absolutely no way OpenAI can commit to $1.4 trillion in investment. Notice how Sam Altman immediately switches to defensive mode when an investor challenges him on these outrageous figures. How can the company with 13 billion in revenues make 1.4 trillion of spend commitments? Sam's response. We're doing well more revenue than that. Second of all, Brad, if you want to sell your shares, I'll find you a buyer. I think we could sell your shares or anybody else's to some of the people who are making the most noise on Twitter about this very quickly. Notice how Sam didn't actually answer the question. He understands there's no realistic chance OpenAI can make this type of investment. What he's actually hoping for is that the U.S. government will intervene to secure his venture and provide his company with a bailout when they eventually exhaust their funding. In Sam Altman's own words, at some level, when something gets sufficiently huge, whether or not they are on paper, the federal government is kind of the insurer of last resort, as we've seen in various financial crises. To express this in straightforward terms, OpenAI expects American taxpayers to foot the bill to rescue them when the AI bubble inevitably bursts. It's becoming increasingly evident that America's approach to AI is jeopardizing the entire economy. Companies like NVIDIA and OpenAI are certainly driving the AI industry in the United States, but they're doing so at tremendous cost with minimal, tangible, sustainable progress to show for it. The financial bubble surrounding AI investments is dangerously inflated, placing the United States on a collision course with a significant economic crisis. Conversely, China's approach to AI is rooted in pragmatism. The government's long-term planning and robust infrastructure are creating a solid foundation for sustainable growth. By concentrating on real-world applications, industrial use cases, and measurable progress, China is positioning itself to dominate the global AI marketplace. As the industry's leading figure Jensen Huang has articulated, the foundations for victory have already been established by China. The United States now faces a critical decision. Will it continue playing the speculative game or pivot toward a more sustainable, real-world approach before it loses not just the race, but potentially damages its entire economy in the process? The contrast couldn't be starker. America has built an AI ecosystem based on hype, circular investment patterns, and speculative valuations disconnected from actual productivity. China has constructed an AI framework anchored in energy infrastructure, industrial application, and measurable economic outcomes. One approach creates impressive stock charts and headlines. The other creates actual technological advancement and economic transformation. The American model relies on continued capital inflows chasing future promises. The Chinese model delivers present-day results that build toward future capabilities. When the reckoning arrives, and with OpenAI's financial trajectory, it's approaching rapidly. Which foundation will prove more resilient? Which approach will have created genuine value rather than just the illusion of value?
The answers to these questions will determine not just who wins the AI race, but potentially the economic trajectory of both nations for decades to come. America's AI bubble isn't just a technology story. It's a referendum on two fundamentally different philosophies about innovation, economic development, and the role of speculation versus productivity in building the future. And if Jensen Huang is correct, we already know which philosophy will prevail.